On last week's show, history was created when American Alex Bright won the opening round of the all-new Speed Car Pro Series. Tonight, we take you trackside to Quit Collie Speedway for the second round of Australian Dirt Track Racing's newest national tournament. And all the sport's heavy hitters are here, including four American professionals. Our exclusive coverage of the Speed Car Pro Series is supported by Speedway Australia. On speed, this is Checkered Flag, proudly presented by Valvoline Sinpower, delivering the ultimate motor oil protection and performance. Yes, thanks for joining us on the Speed Channel as the 19th consecutive year of Checkered Flag continues right here. And welcome to our exclusive coverage, round two of the Speed Car Pro Series from the Quit Collie Speedway. There's no doubt this event getting off to a perfect start at the Perth Motorplex in front of a very big crowd. And joining me, one of the top WA drivers, Scott Glazebrook. This obviously doing a fair bit for speed car racing this tournament. This is great. It's, uh, it's really good. It's really healthy for WA. It's really healthy for the, on a national level. Um, a lot of guys are supporting it and we've had a lot of people doing a lot of hard work in the, in the background and uh, it's really good to be a part of. No doubt about it, the quality of driver that's been assembled uh, is extremely impressive. You'd expect nothing less. Yeah, it, it makes a really good close race and real hard racing and uh, we're really happy to be a part of it and yeah, hopefully we get some uh, good results. Your personal goals for the season? Uh, I'm really aiming to be up at the top with the you know, top three guys. It's been really nice. Uh, I'm kind of looking forward to hitting the road and doing a, a bit of racing on the East Coast and that sort of stuff. Um, but you know, We'll get through these next couple of rounds, we'll be good. Thanks for joining us. No worries, thank you. There he is, Scotty Glazebrook. He will emerge one of the men to beat tonight in the second round of the Speed Car Pro Series, and there is no shortage of flies here, I can assure you. Before we commence our coverage for round two, let's look back at what happened in round one and recap the progress point score. For those that attended the Perth Motorplex on the night of the Magic Man 34, they were witnessing history in the making as the inaugural Speed Car Pro Series got underway and they were treated to a fascinating race. So here we are, Clark and Alex Bright on the front row, then Manders and Schumann. Schumann, of course, the American in the yellow car. He made a great start. He's up to third already. Bright on the outside of Adam Clark as they run down the back straight, a 34-lap journey. 24 of the best speed car drivers from Australia and the United States did battle over the 34 lap distance. But the race would essentially be a fight between two of Uncle Sam's finest. Four times Magic Man winner Davey Ray and the Pennsylvanian young gun Alex Bright. There's Ray. Adam Clark is the only Aussie figuring in the race at the moment and he is fourth. We see Ray and Bright exchanging the lead there. Slide job after slide job. You know, waiting for these races, these are kind of battles where guys are slide jumping each other and utilising the track to the full advantage and it's just awesome to see cars crisscrossing lines like this and, 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 and swapping up the lead. This is a sensational speedway. Wheel to wheel stuff from the mighty speed cars. Despite an early challenge from speed car comeback king Adam Clark, the pair duelled for Magic Man supremacy for the majority of the race until lap 26 when this happened. Bright goes to the inside. He's pitching a page out of the book of Davey Ray. We've seen Davey Ray do that multiple times. Ray's got problems. Bright goes back to the front. Davey Ray has lost power. That's a real shame there for Davey. He, he was certainly running away with this, this race. Ray's unfortunate demise allowed Bright and the polarised entry to assume the race lead and take out both the Magic Man and the opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series from fellow American Casey Schumann and Sydney sider Mark Brown. Alex Bright, he wins the opening round of the Speed Car Pro Series and the Magic Man 34, the richest speed car event in Australia. The tournament getting off to a flying start at the Perth Motorplex. Good to have your company. The Quit Collie Speedway, the venue tonight, you can see barely a cloud in the sky. Conditions are perfect. I'm joined by Sammy Walsh and Warren Ferguson again. Sammy, a real buzz in the air here. Yeah, definitely, mate. Uh, great to be here for the second round. New night, new opportunities, and I'm sure there's a few people who would like to make amends for their first night. 
And Warren really couldn't have written a better script, could we, for the first round? Uh, can they back it up tonight? I think they can. The first round was awesome racing, and uh, I think the guys will be looking forward to getting at it at Collie Speedway. OK, the current standings, we recap that at the completion of round one. Obviously, Alex Bright, by virtue of his win, is on top of the points chart in advance of his compatriot, Casey Schumann. And the first Aussie is, of course, Mark Brown leading Scott Glazebrook. But, of course, it is very early days. That was round one of seven. Now, the Revolution the Race Gear Quick Time ahead of the action here tonight at the Quick Collie Speedway. The American Alex Bright, his barnstorming form in this tournament continues. Likewise, Casey Schumann, very consistent. Here's now a word from the man that set quick time. Well, this young man had a great weekend last weekend, has started off brilliantly this weekend, taking Revolution Race Gear fast time. Alex Bright, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. The car was, uh, it was fast. It looked pretty good out there, but the track started to roughen up a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure how good the, the track's going to be for race-wise, but uh, it's a little one-grooved right now, and hopefully it widens up a little bit. Uh, Makes, makes for some better racing because I'm going to have to come from the back of the heat races. I was going to say back home, I mean, tricks are, the tracks are usually a little bit more dry, slick than what they are in this one tonight. Oh, definitely. Uh, it's a tacky track. Uh, see how, it's fast, but we'll see how it goes. If there's one driver that has made a profound impact on speed car racing in this country in recent years, it's Sydney sider Mark Brown. The former Victorian's list of achievements are impressive winning five Power Eye Speed Car Super Series titles, the Tim Crouch Memorial at Murray Bridge, the 50 lap Speed Car Challenge at Power Matters Valvoline Raceway, and the time-honoured Australian Speed Car Grand Prix three times. Brown is still enjoying his racing after almost three decades as a competitive driver and is showing no sign of slowing down. Yeah, I think this is the 28th season and um, yeah, I've had a pretty good career. It's been fun and been a lot of hard work, but really enjoying it still. So I remember many, many years ago seeing you in a red number 33, I think it was the South House car. Back in the days, running a Mercedes motor. That's, a, that's going way back. Yeah, it was actually a Volvo motor but with the Mercedes Benz sponsorship. But yeah, I think that's like 15, 20 years ago, maybe. It's been a long time. We've had a few car owners since then. But, you know, like I said, I'm still enjoying it. It's not uncommon to see Brown and the Team Fox Racing Eslinger powered Spike Speed car at the front of the pack in many of the big name events. His association with team owner Brendan Fox has been well established over the past few seasons and Brown is quite content with this successful partnership. Yeah, I drive for Brendan Fox. Um, he's, uh, he's got a company by the name of Showpiece Signs that supports our team along with Lucas Wall and a few others and um, I think I've been with him for three years. We've had a lot of success since then and um, you know, we, we, we use a, um, the Esslinger power plant and uh, the Spike shows it with the ARS shock. So yeah, no, it's been, it's been good. He's been a good car owner to drive for and um, Hopefully we can just keep winning some races and keep them happy. Despite the accomplishments Brown has achieved in his career, the one title that he has yet to add to his CV is the Australian Speed Car Championship. The tag of best driver never to have won now rests on Brown's shoulders, following Neville Lance's title glory last season, ending a 30-year hoodoo on the Perth driver. Although he still holds a desire to win that elusive title, Brown candidly admits that the pressures of travelling and being away from family does take its toll. That said, it's their love and support that keeps the fire roaring within. My wife, Belinda's fantastic. You know, um, I couldn't do it without her. And um, if we ever get the opportunity to win that Australian title, and uh, you know, she's going to be the first person I thank because she's the one that's been through all the heartache, that you know, the highs and the lows, the good and the bad. You know, we it's it's been tough. You know, on the family. You know, travelling away and all this and. Um, you know, she, she deserves it more than anybody. Uh, in regards to your career, do you see an idea how many years you got left or is it just play by ear? It's playing by ear at the moment. I mean, I'd like to think that I could stay midget racing for another three years, um, hopefully get Caden into a midget, you know, but, you know, I, I don't know if I can last that long. It's just, you know, take it week by week, basically. Um, you know, we, we, I was pretty keen at the start of the season and already I'm tired and um, it's hard work. It, you know, just being away from the family and, you know, with my job at Rhonda Lee and that, it, it gets tough. Um, all the hours you spend in the garage of a night time. But, um, you know, it's just week by week. And, um, yeah, I enjoy it. I have my ups and downs, you know, like anybody. It's, it's tough. And um, But when you're here at the racetrack and you're in the car, it's awesome fun. And um, you know, there's nothing better than winning, you know. One event Brown aspires to compete in again before he retires is the annual Chili Bowl in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Brown is one of a few Australian drivers who have been able to compete in Midget Racing Super Bowl and he has fond memories of taking part in this time on a classic. 
Yeah, oh, it's funny. I was just talking to Davey Ray about it. Um, it's something special. Um, it's something where we want to do one more time. We sort of, Foxy and I have spoken a few times about maybe that being our swan song, you know, but I sort of, um, I, I definitely want to go back to the Chili Bowl. Uh, we ran there twice. Uh, it's a few years back now, and um, uh, we won both our heat races there, and done, we were pretty respectable. I mean, we finished one spot out of the A on the final night first year and two spots out of the A the second night so you know I think we've got a bit of redemption to do there. We, now I've made a lot of blues there like made, made a lot of mistakes that cost me I guess and um, I like that one more crack at the chilli bowl is pretty special. Yes good colour package there on Mark Brown what a driver over such a long career and the Australian Speed Car Championship the only major event to have eluded him he'll get his chance at Speedway City when the NZ Australian Championship is staged in January. So, very busy here in preparation for the next round of heats. This is what happened in the opening three races. After the excitement and drama of the opening round in Perth, the expectation was high for the Speed Car Pro Series circus to continue its impressive start. 25 drivers from across Australia and the United States rolled into Quit Collie Speedway, 213 kilometres southwest of Perth, for the second round of the new series. Whilst Alex Bright took out the Revolution Race Gear Quick Time for Jack Berry Racing, Iowa's Davey Ray suffered a cruel blow before the heats got underway. The three times Australian speed car champion suffered an engine failure in qualifying and was no certainty to make it back for the heat races. Yeah, it looks pretty big here. I don't know for sure exactly what happened there, but it just went up in a puff of smoke and pulled it off the track here, and it's got oil everywhere. So we made uh, three or four laps here at uh, the Speedway here tonight. Looks like an excellent racetrack, in good shape, and uh, certainly was looking forward to running here. Heat one gone underway as dust fell, and Manjim of Southie Guadagnino made good of a front row start to clear away as the race began. Despite an early threat from Lee Redmond, Guadagnino kept a cool head to take the win. Redmond finished second with Mark Brown third. Alex Bright could only manage fifth having started at the tail of the field. Oh, it's a little bit rough, but you know, the guys are doing a magnificent job on the car to overcome that. And I can't thank, you know, Chris enough. You know, he put in that much of a good setup. That car was just on rails. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Dad. To all my crew, Troy, my brother Jeremy, you know. Everybody that puts in, can't thank you enough. After a successful career in Formula 500s, South Australian youngster Brock Hallett was given the opportunity of a lifetime by car owner Trevor Nucky to participate in the Speed Car Pro Series. He quickly demonstrated in Heat 2 why he is a driver on the rise, dive bombing down the inside of Vaughan Manders commencing on lap 3. He quickly cleared away to take a dominant win. Manders held on to second, fending off Casey Schumann, who finished third, having started seventh. Yeah, you know, uh, I just drive the car and, you know, Trevor got it all ready and, and you know, I'm just, I get the good job of just turning up and driving it, so he's uh, prepared a good race car for me and, you know, hopefully, you know, we can make our way for, towards the front in the A main later on tonight. Unlike his fellow countrymen, Pennsylvania's Steve Buckwalter made light work of charging to the lead in Heat 3, starting from fourth on the grid. Buckwalter passed early race leader Andy Pearce on lap four, and not even a mid-race yellow caused by Scott Glazebrook could stop his charge. Buckwalter took the win with Pearce in second, and Australian champion Neville Lance third. Glazebrook recovered to finish fourth. Stay with us on Checkered Flag. We return after the break with round two of Heat Action. Plus, we have a chat with Andy Pearce's girlfriend, Danielle, and the woman behind the man. He was actually warming up the car at a practice meeting and I just saw this race car going around. I was like, ooh, this is pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, he jumped out and history since then. On speed, you're watching Australia's longest running weekly speedway show, Checkered Flag, celebrating 19 years. Presented by Valvoline Sin Power. Delivering the ultimate motor oil protection and performance. And you're watching exclusive coverage in round two of the all new Speed Car Pro Series. We come to you from the Quint Collie Speedway in Western Australia. Great to have your company on the Speed Channel. And the next round of heat set to unleash on the Clayway. 
the former Formula 500 star Brock Hallett on pole. Alfajovic, Robinson, Mears, Clayton, Kingshot, Bright and Prahl. Eight drivers. Alex Bright worth watching, starting from deep in the pack as these drivers stand on the gas and young Brock Hallett is going to charge through turns one and two, a clear-cut race leader. There's no shortage of traffic further back in the field, jostling for the minor placings, but that's a great shot of our leader, tearing down the back straight, setting up for the slide through three and four. Epic battle. Early stages of this race. Check out the traffic right-hand side of screen. Now we get a tight shot of it down the back straight. Incredible, Paul Robinson has managed to surge into second spot as we take you on board with Dane Kingshot. Yeah, Bright's right at the back of that group, but he's struggling big time. He's moving to the outside, the inside, the middle, and he can't get through that traffic jam. On lap three of ten, great on-board action, and still the intensity of this race is impressive. Hallett's thinking, how good is this? A long way out in front, Sammy, and whilst they're jostling, further back in the field it's doing him a massive favor he's getting away without any pressure definitely given uh giving him a big chance to to, to get clear air and, and and take off at the front and you know while the guys are battling at the for the uh for the placings behind him they're uh costing themselves valuable time yeah things have settled down a bit now after that insane start of this race in terms of the scrap for second third and fourth we are at mid-race distance and for those of you watching around australia that have not heard of Brock Hallett this kid has massive wraps on him he did it all in Formula 500 stepping into the midget in 2013-14 and going great guns there's a good shot of Paul Robinson in full flight he lies in second and you see right there just going above the cushion to try and make something happen he's doing everything he can to get around Robinson for second it's been a good battle between the American and Robinson fairly impressed with Robinson he's an aggressive customer in the eighth car, he certainly doesn't shirk his job. To some extent, it's superfluous. No one is going to catch the man on screen. The driver of car number S11, Brock Hallett. There's a car spinning. It is Carl Prowl. He pulls off the racing line. We'll wait and see what officialdom does here. Now we go orange on the speedway. So Prowl's car deemed to be parked precariously. And better to be safe rather than sorry. Lucky for Brock, he uh, was, you know, not, not much closer than, uh, than he was to, to Prowl as he spun because it could have been uh, disastrous for our leader. Yeah, we've seen that happen so often in this sport. And Prowl just looping his car on the exit to turn number two. He won't be happy with that. You can see a little cushion starting to build up, very lap on the circuit. Describe it as a narrow speedway at the moment. It'll undoubtedly widen up. Okay, so nose to tail configuration in terms of the restart. This brings Robinson closer to Brock Hallett. The glorious uncertainties of speedway racing. Now Hallett is going to have to work for it after previously enjoying a very comfortable lead. The gap between first and second, about three car lengths as I head onto the main straight, cross the start finish line. It is lap nine of ten. Here goes Bright, he's trying to top. Oh, no, he's found the cushion and wasn't able to do it with Robinson. Conditions a little on the dusty side at the Collie Speedway, but it's a hooked up quick racetrack. It's a little patchy, perhaps a little inconsistent as we see Howlett doing a sterling job on his last racing lap. And whilst all of that's going on, the American Alex Bright continues to pester the daylights out of Robinson. But Howlett, that's some drive by the kid off turn four wins heat number four. Entertaining stuff. Robinson finishing runner-up in advance of the American in Glenn Mears in 23. Too good for Dane Kingshot. So Hallett proving his superiority, enjoying the benefits of the front row start. Robinson, he had to work so hard for his runner-up position. He was being assaulted by the American, Alex Bright. And here's a word now from the runner-up making his way out of the car now as it rolls back a little bit. Paul Robinson, that's uh, a good second to consolidate some points there. Yeah, thanks, mate. It was, um, I was sort of, the car was a bit all over the place at the start of that heat. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. I think once the tyre pressure's come up and stuff like that, it was all right. So. 
In that situation, you were actually more the hunter than the hunter. Uh, Alex Bright right on your tail there towards the end of that race. Do you notice that kind of thing going on when uh, somebody's that close? Every now and then you can hear them. Uh, but unless they stick their nose in, you just concentrate on what you're doing. Otherwise, you, you lose focus on what you're doing, they'll go by in here. So. Yeah, well done to Paul Robinson. Races race up, managing to fend off the challenge of Alex Bright, arguably the form man of this tournament. This is Speed Car Pro Series social media contact points. And congratulations to Speedway Australia. It's been an outstanding start to their new championship. What Agnino and Golding will share the front row in Heat 5. Redmond and Jordan, Brown, Lance, Talenta and Mills. There's no doubt that Redmond has been really good so far in the series. The former bike racer making a successful transition to four wheels. And he gets a good start, Redmond, up on the inside. Have a look at Neville Lance, the Australian champion, sweeping around them up high on the circuit. He got a beautiful run out of turn two. And already the national champion leads by 10 car lengths. Extraordinary stuff. Oh, now he hooks up and blows it. Almost hits the fence, does well to stop it. Another change of lead. This is crazy. It's almost a disadvantage to get to the front. Redmond did it in the first corner, and now Lance has done it a couple of corners later. <laughs> That's very well said. We go orange on the speedway. We have drama. A car stranded on the exit to turn number two. It is uh, Chris Talenta who has stopped. And as a result, he will be shown the rear of field board. We how, come back to single file formation. How lucky is Neville Lance there, David? Back to the front. Let's see if he can maintain it after a, a super charge on the outside to find the lead. He got hooked up and almost blew it. Back under racing conditions. The veteran, Neville Lance, leader of heat race number five in the second round of the Speed Car Pro Series. Here they come off turn four. Mark Brown trying to work his way through the field as we look on, on board with Lee Redman. Working the inside of the racetrack and uh, getting very close to get by, but I mean, he's got to try and make up some points and, and get to the front. Yeah, he certainly has. He's struggling down there back in the pack. I watched him through some of them turns, a few pushes where the car wouldn't turn left. And I see another guy having a bit of, bit of a struggle. It's Travis Mills down the back. I'm sure he'd like to be further forward as well. Yeah, Mills, a solid driver. And he is a long way back in the field in this race. It is all Neville Lance. Track is a little tricky tonight, fairly challenging in parts. Just the unpredictability of it. On board again with Lee Redmond. Looking out the back, there are no shortage of challenges around him. No change in the order with Neville Lance leading this one comfortably. Track's a little bit treacherous in some ways. I guess it's got a sizable curve to lean on if you want to run the top, and it's got a little bit of moisture around the pole line on the bottom. So I think if, uh, if, you, if you're reluctant to commit to either line, you can get stuck in the middle, and I think that's what's happened to a couple of our guys tonight with spins and, and, and little losers. But uh, you've really got to make sure you stick to the, the moisture on the racetrack. Yeah, you're right there, Sammy. It'd almost be good to see a couple of these guys get up above that ledge and clean a bit of that off and create a second line. I think that would improve the race. Yeah, well, we definitely saw uh, we definitely saw Neville take full advantage of that in the first corner and, and, and use that to, to slingshot around basically the whole field. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. So Lance enjoying himself. He leads Troy Jordan, the driver of car 53, is his nearest challenger. And it's got to be said, he's probably 100 metres behind. So Lance is going to cruise to a fairly effortless victory here after having a scary moment early in the race when he got hooked up on the exit to turn number two, or got crossed up is probably a better description. And the Australian champion, champion rather, exiting turn four. He had to wait a long time before he won the holy grail of the sport. Onto the back straight for the final time. The Lance machine in full flight. And this is a very big win. The battle further back in the field is not too bad. Jordan still has the best of it. Lance across the line takes a comfortable victory. Now the next man across the line, Jordan, greets the checkup. Lee Redmond third. Lee was giving Troy Jordan plenty to think about over the last couple of laps. Mark Brown, the best he could manage was fourth. And Alfie Guadagnino coming home in fifth position. That was heat race number five there. Is one more heat to run tonight in the second round of the Speed Car Pro Series. The veteran Neville Lance, our program last week, 
highlighted his career with a feature story, has also driven NASCAR. Here's a word. Well, that opening lap was certainly one of an Australian champion. The second one, well, I'm not too sure, but Neville, doesn't matter. A good heat win. Yeah, look, um, sort of got in front and sort of um, lifted too hard and with the system that we're running, um, it completely shut the engine off and locked the back wheels up. So I thought, oh, I was lucky that I recovered, actually, and the yellows come on. So fortunately, we were able to get back in up to fine again and then make sure we didn't do it again. Yeah, well done to Neville. Final qualifying heat at the Quint Collie Speedway is next. Good field. Vaughan Manders and Andy Pierce on the front row. The ladder on pole in the white car. And the American Buck Walter, Bennett Glazebrook. Moldy West Australian champion, then Blake Mills, Bob Goddard, and the other American, Casey Schumann. No slouch in a yellow 38 car. And the drivers now stand on the gas as we receive green light conditions at Collie. Aggressive move from Andy Pierce up on the inside there. He outdoes Vaughan Manders' problem. Contact Bennett. And also Blake Mills is up and over off camera. There's Mills. He was pushed into the wall. He flipped too. So two cars crashing out of heat number six. Onto the back straight the first time. Nasty. Yeah, it was a nasty crash there. I see Blake tried to get the runner around the outside, and unfortunately Bennett showed us all how easy it is to tip over a speed car. Yeah, short wheelbase, open wheel configuration. They do fly on the Valvoline Sinpower replay. Bennett driving into the car ahead of him, and you can see there, left-hand side of screen, Blake Mills clipping the wall, and, well, his ride in the race at that point ended. This is from onboard Casey Schumann. Gee, he got some air too. Well, he did. Blake though. Mills, didn't he? Yeah, he landed pretty hard. And I think, oh, there we go. We've got uh, Todd Bennett there on the stretcher. He had a nasty landing where I think the frame rails dug right into the ground. It's, that's hard on your back and your neck. Yeah, good that he's conscious anyway. We'll head downstairs and find out a little more now. Brad Steele is on the spot. Well, as you can see, there's a bit of damage to the K-Tech Reynolds number 26. Blake, uh, how are you feeling, first of all, mate? Uh, yeah, no, not too bad. Um, yeah, bit of a bit of a bummer for my second <laughs> second meeting. So um, yeah, we'll just go back, assess it, and see see what damage we got. From your point of view, mate, what actually happened? Um, went around the outside of Glazebrook, I think it was, and whoever was in front of me spun, started the roll, and yeah, just got the right rear in the wall. Didn't really have uh, many places to go from that point. So once he started, that was it. She was just hang on. <laughs> Yeah, racing incident, so both teams will survey the damage. Obviously, we trust that Todd Bennett is OK. He's been transported to hospital where he will undergo examination. But at least he was conscious and talking good news. So, race restart. We're underway again in the final qualifying heat tonight. And down the back straight, Vaughan Manders is the race leader in the red and black car, number 22. The charge of the light brigade behind him. This will go down to the wire, we hope. We've got Buckwalter and, and Schumann both charging through the field. I think they'll be uh, they'll be great to watch trying to carve these guys up. Yeah, I saw Schumann there way above the line in the first corner. And uh, look at look at Buckwalter there. He's not afraid to get above that cushion and hang it out. So if they clean this line off a little bit, we'll get into a, a good couple of grooves of racing here. Gee, it's an exciting form of motorsport. The speed cars, or as the traditionalists prefer to call this class, the midgets. When they're running two and three wide, on a hooked up track and the front wheels are coming off the racetrack regularly Pierce you would go a long good. way to find a better spectacle sorry mate you're right pierce has been doing a good job there hanging on to uh third place in front of schumann and uh looking at buckwater pretty hard at times as well on board now with casey schumann the driver of car number 38 by five of ten and slowly but surely he's picking his way through the traffic buckwater in the silver car is the big mover at the moment. Vaughan Mand is doing a fine job though. Have a look at Buckwalder. Not afraid to go upstairs in search of better traction. Now he slams it down low on the circuit. A real race of strategy up front, at least for the man in second place. Mander's game plan is simple. It's bury the thing, as in the right foot through the firewall and hang on for dear life. Buckwalder's definitely been uh 
charging the track probably harder than we've seen anybody all night from top to bottom right up above the cushion to right down onto the pole line to try and make a make a gap that he can drive past Vaughan but Vaughan uh, is just doing a great job of holding the lead. Man is outstanding and here's Sherman as well in the yellow car now coming into contention he's arguably the fastest car on the circuit right now so Manders leads two Americans Buckwalder one car left behind him and Schumann well he'll fig up in this race as the checkered flag unfolds you'd think down the main straightaway again Vaughan Manders leader in heat race number six he's been able to shake off the challenge of Buckwalder slightly who has lost a little ground although as I say that he gets a great run out of turn number two what a race here up front the local on the inside Schumann now he slips up on the low line and best his compatriot who slips back to third now what a race last lap will stay with it down the back straight away here Vaughan Manders under siege from Casey Schumann. They're separated by a car lift. Buckwall is not done with yet either. They exit turn four for the sprint home. And have a look at this. Manders got it by a car lift, I'd say. Schumann second, Buckwall to third. Easily the best race of the night. Then Andy Pierce, the best of the rest in advance of Scott Glazebrook. Will someone get me a pan it off? How good was that? Vaughan Manders will be well pleased with himself. He's never worked harder for a heat race victory in his career. Here's Brad. Winner of that last heat, Vaughan Manders, exits the car with a very big smile on his face. He hasn't had one for a, uh, the last couple of weeks, but it's good to see you get a heat race win here at the Speed Car Pro Series at Collie. Yeah, thanks very much. Listen, this crew's been working so hard on this car, and uh, they gave me half a car then. I'll tell you what, we, we, we're going to be all right. They're going to look after me. Mate, the pressure you must have been under with those two American drivers right on your tail for the whole race. It must have been fun being out there. Oh, yeah, it was. It was pretty tough. I mean, they, they don't take no prisoners, so, yeah, we, we're pretty happy. Well done to Vaughan Manders. As I said, he had to work really hard for it, so heat race action is now complete, and a lot of repairs underway in the pits ahead of the business end of proceedings tonight. We'll take this opportunity to head down to Brad Steele, who has an update. Scott Glazebrook, not where you want to be on points. No, nah, we're finding it tough. Uh, I'm not sure whether we made the top seven. I, I think we're just out of it. Do you know? No, I haven't found out. Uh, well, I'm going to go and have a look now, but I reckon we'll probably be out of eight or nine. We uh, did a right in the time trials. I think it was six. Um, we finished fourth in our first race after we had a bit of a bit of a spin. Um, I guess we got uh, 30 laps to try and make it work, so we're changing the car now, trying to get a bit tightened up and see how we go. Scott Glazebrook there with Brad Still. As it turns out, Scott accruing enough points to qualify for the Super 7's pole shuffle. This is very important to determine the top seven positions on the grid. And the American Buckwalder and Lee Redman were eliminated at the end of the first section of this. As they race, those drivers, the last two drivers, are forced to drop out of contention. Then Mark Brown and Scott Glazebrook were duly eliminated. And that left two Americans up front in Alex Bright and Casey Schumann doing battle for pole position. As it turns out, it was Alex Bright in the 29 car that took the win and by virtue of that he starts tonight's main event on pole Schumann on his outside Lance and Mark Brown will share the second row followed by Scott Glazebrook and Lee Redman and Buck Walter next now the B main the last chance qualifier the results of that race Mears in advance of Andy Pierce, Vaughan Manders Davey Ray and Rob Golding it is the main event next on the program With me now is Daniel Lewis, partner of uh, Andy Pierce. Daniel, how would you first meet? Funny, actually. We actually met, he was crewing for my dad when I was 16, and his dad was the car owner. So was it love at first sight, or was it take some time? It actually was. Um, he was actually warming up the car at a practice meeting, and I just saw this race car going around, and I was like, ooh, this is pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, he jumped out, and. History since then. I was going to say, was he uh, quick off the mark or did it take him a while to ask for that first day? No, he actually took the big leap. Um, yeah, and then he, since he likes his food, he shared his Mars bar with me and I knew that was it. <laughs> What's he uh, like at home? Is he a uh, pleasure to be around? Yeah, he, he's really laid back, easy to get, obviously easy to get along with for me. Um, I don't know, he, he's my backbone and yeah. What about on race day? Does he get any different? Oh, he's too quiet. So you never know what's going on in, in that head. Uh, in regards to uh, away from the track, does he have any other interests apart from Speedway? 
No. <laughs> Simple as that? It's just family? That's it? Um, yeah, family. Um, live and breathe Speedway. Um, my little daughter Zoe, she's seven. She races quarter midgets. So when we're not at a racetrack, we're at a little racetrack. Um, and if we're not doing that, we'll be going to the movies or having a nice dinner somewhere, picnic in the park. So it can be a romantic sometimes. <laughs> Thanks to Valvoline Sinpower, principal sponsor of Check and Flag. Welcome back to Quint Collie Speedway. Main event time in round two of the Speed Car Pro Series. Check and Flag, your home of the Speed Car Pro Series in its inaugural season of 2013-14. You can follow our show on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And for the Speed Car Pro Series, Twitter, Facebook and of course, check out its excellent website for regular updates and news. Wright and Schumann, the two Americans on the front row. The reigning Australian champion inside second row with Mark Brown on his outside. Then Glazebrook Redmond, Buck Walder, Mills Robinson and Brock Hallett starting out of P10 in car S11. Kingshot Clayton, Mills Jordan Mears, Andy Pierce out of 16. Vaughan Mandis, Davey Ray has managed to recover and find, him, find uh, a way back out onto the racetrack after blowing an engine in qualifying, then Golding was next. So Davey Ray, a welcome addition to the field after transferring via the B main. Schumann, race leader, down in the back straight the first time. The snarling pack of speed cars in pursuit of the 38 car, but he has an advantage of a couple of car lets. We've had an issue here. Vaughan Manders, a nasty crash on the back straightaway. The wide camera not picking it up. We'll look at an alternate angle of that incident. The 22 car has come to rest. You can see Vaughan moving around in the cockpit. It looked to be a nasty one. Caught it out of the corner of my eye. As we take the Valvoline Sinfower replay, it looks like, uh, I think it was Glazebrook there on the inside. Gets a bit of a helping hand. Yes, I think it's Glazebrook, and that bottles the field up. And there you go. You see um, Manders, uh, yeah, Manders there going upside down in the background. I think he bumped wheels with Mears, and. Here's Mears now with a fairly clear onboard shot. And there's Manders, bang. They exchange paint and Manders goes flying into the concrete wall. And I think he's come down roll cage first on the concrete wall. In fact, he's not well. Officials on the scene. Brad Steele is also on the scene. Let's find out more. Well, it's good to see that Vaughan Manders is under his own steam here, David. It looks like he's uh, being able to take his own helmet off with the assistance of the uh, crash crew, of course. It was a pretty nasty crash, that one. And, uh, well, obviously, the uh, precautionary measures to make sure he's A-OK. -okay. We concur with your comments, Brad. Thank you for that. So, field gridded up again. And full race restart, side-by-side -side configuration. We wish Vaughan Manders all the best. Casey Schumann and Alex Bright prepare to resume hostilities and Schumann he gets the advantage leads him onto the back straight good battle for second there's your leader in car number 38 meanwhile Alex Bright has been bumped back a spot his cars run nose to tail it is Neville Lance up in the second spot the Australian champion having a much better night tonight than was the case at the Perth Motorplex where he had severe mechanical gremlins in the opening round of the championship. So Nifty Nev back on the pace this evening. Yeah, I think there's a bit of local knowledge there for Nev. Sorry, sorry, just cut you off there, Sammy. He's uh, running the bottom groove here as these Americans are trying to get their momentum on the cushion. But the cushion's proving pretty uh, treacherous at the moment. It's great to see one of our Aussie competitors up uh, splitting the Yanks up front and, and uh, give them a run for their money too. Mark Brown's running strongly. So is Buck Walder on board with Lee Redmond. That's Robinson in the eight car who switches lines. and goes up on the inside or at least attempts to the pace is a cracker here during the early stages of this 30 lap main event you're watching round two of the speed car pro series from quit collie speedway casey Sherman, he's been in good touch in this tournament during the early stages leading in the 38 car looking the goods neville lance second and we've got a problem with buck walter one of the four americans here tonight He's up and over. We were concentrating on the leading group of cars. Buckwater was just behind them. Let's try and ascertain what happened here. 
The Valvoline Synth Power replay. And Redmond passing Buck Walden just as he got out of shape and looped the car upside down. Another look in super slow motion. I think I just caught it there, Dave, where he uh, caught the cushion really hard, biked it up and, and slapped the car over. It can happen. They're volatile little cars. Brown is up to fourth, by the way, and is now harassing Alex Bright. It's Schumann in advance of Neville Lance. So a couple of the Aussie boys here tonight, Neville Lance and Mark Brown particularly, are running with the Americans, which is a very good sign. Nice yep. to see Brownie get it up there and getting it going. He's having a little bit of a struggle with this race car still, pushing in the corners, finding it uh, hard to get a comfortable groove going, I think. He did finish on the podium. A strong drive at the Perth Motorplex in the opening round of this series. Schumann is still the leader. Lance in second. Alex Bright is third. Brown has made a mistake and has gone back a spot to fifth. And we've got another issue with two cars coming together midway between turns three and four. Robinson is one of them. That's him in the eighth car. And Jordan is the other. Just a racing incident, getting caught up together. No major damage, it would appear. And both drivers are fine. Yes, David, I think this uh, feature race is proving rather treacherous for all competitors at the moment. The Valvoline Sin Power replays. We take the wide shot. And Robinson, well, he got out of shape and spun the car, and Jordan had nowhere to go. Different angle of it. It could have been a lot worse. There was plenty of traffic around the incident, but all other drivers are managing to avoid it, other than Jordan, of course, who got caught up in it. Now, a single file restart. Schumann prepares to stand on the gas. Green flag conditions again at the Collie Speedway. There's still 24 laps remaining in this one. The early stages of the event punctuated by stoppages. A few incidents here tonight. Track is demanding. One thing you do notice with Casey Schumann is how straight he drives the car, especially on the exit to the turn. He's very, very smooth compared to some of the other guys, and I guess, uh, you know, just tries to work on keeping the car going forward. I yeah. think that's a big deal with these midgets, Sammy. The, the cars, to get your momentum going, you've got to be straight, you've got to be forward, and not burn the tyres off. So when you say straight, for not the uninitiated watching, it's all about getting your wheels in line as quickly as possible and not drifting. Yeah, that's that's pretty right. You you uh, you can go a long way around the track when you're sideways and spend plenty of RPM doing it. If you can get that thing straight, it'll fire off down the straightaway, and that's exactly what Casey did right there. Track is uh, becoming slick now. Pole line up to about the middle of the track. There is a genuine cushion, but we're not seeing anyone really exploit that at the moment. Perhaps it's not offering as much as it looks from our vantage point. That can often be the case. Sherman, the leader, and another car brings on the amber caution lights. You can see it there. And officials doing the right thing to Lenta. He's just a metre or two off the pole line. A little bit dangerous to continue. It's a volatile, explosive sport. And if a driver is positioned in a location that's deemed dangerous, the officials will stop the race. Now Schumann, Neville Lance right behind him. Can the Australian champion take it up to the American professional? That'll certainly be his plan. Alex Bright is third on the circuit. Then Mark Brown. Here's Lance trying to get closer to Casey Schumann. But Schumann, he keeps his right boot firmly planted on the floor. Lance has got a great opportunity to, to really bite at the heels of, uh, of Schumann at the moment. He's utilising the inside of the racetrack a little bit more than Schumann is. And he lost a little bit coming out of turn two there. Yeah, Schumann's got that advantage being up front. He's got clean race track. He can pick his lines. He can do what he does. You'll see when Lance Lance tries to challenge, he's trying high, low, middle, seeing wherever he can get some drive. Where Schumann just picks his line comfortably, smooth, professional. Schumann has been a welcome addition to the early rounds of this Speed Car Pro Series. No change. In fact, the American, if anything, is starting to get away from the Australian champion. Lance is. The ham and the American sandwich because Alex Bright is third and starting to close in now on Neville Lance. Apologies for the grainy onboard shots tonight. The lighting here at the Collie Speedway is not consistent. You can see the different colours of lights there at the top of the screen. Some are pink, some are white. It's playing uh, 
bit of havoc with our onboard shots. And we take the fence cam. As they slide through the top turns, it is all Casey Schumann. He'll be hard to stop in this one. Alex Bright's starting to come on there at the back of Neville Lance. He's starting to give Lance fits. And I, I think Lance is struggling. He, he can't get around the cushion as good as he was earlier. He's sitting on the bottom. When he gets off the corners, he's a little bit sideways. And it's given Bright uh, plenty of chance to catch up. Got to give a wrap to Jack Berry, the car owner of the Alex Bright Polar Ice 29 car. Of course, Jack, the proprietor of the Polar Ice Company, a magnificent supporter of speed car racing. Owns the naming rights to uh, the speed car series conducted domestically at the Archerfield circuit in Brisbane. What a season for speed cars in 2013-14. The advent of the speed car pro series. And of course, the World Midget Championship. Four rounds to be held in Australia. Two at Lismore, two at Archerfield. There's also been a $10,000 to win speed car race announced for Toowoomba. The Toowoomba Speed Bowl. And the Speed Car Super Series operating along the east coast of Australia doing a great job as well. So there is no shortage of world-class action for Speed Car fans this summer. Sherman is putting the cleaners through them here. As I alluded to earlier, he was just saying really smooth, keeping the car nice and straight. Basically, it, it really doesn't matter what line he's on. His car looks to be working pretty good, whether he runs in on the cushion or whether he tries to aim for the bottom. He, he's very, uh, very calculated in what he does. And, and at the moment, he's really got uh, no threats from the guys behind him. No, that straight race car coming off the corners. You'll see he's got a little bit of a different style to the other guys. He'll pitch it quite early. See there, about halfway down the straight. And by the time he gets to the middle of the corner, he's just about straightened the race car up and able to drive straight off the corner. Warren Ferguson and Sammy Walsh with me in commentary. Our expert commentators, both men have spent time driving these cars. Sammy Walsh finishing on the podium in the Australian Speed Car Grand Prix a couple of summers ago. Warren, you've done more laps than Sammy in speed cars. Uh, in fact, it was your choice of category for some number of seasons. Compare yeah. it for me to driving a sprint car. Look, it's uh, they're chalk and cheese. It's different. A sprint car, you try to keep the thing straight on corner entry. You float it in under the wing. You let the wing grab hold and, and you feel that traction. And you've got an extraordinary amount of horsepower there to get you out of trouble. With a speed car, you've got to float that thing on the tyres, get it sideways, and uh, try not to spin out, but then at the same time, keep your momentum to get round the corner. They're quite a twitchy, tricky little car to drive. The late great George Tattnall always said to me, Sammy, that it's harder to drive a midget well than it is a sprint car. They're, they're more twitchy, less unforgiving. Definitely. Well, without, without the wing and the power, um, I guess it all comes down to... Uh, comes down to Schumann making a little mistake there in turn one, but it all comes down to the choices you make as a driver, and there's definitely more more skill, I think, involved in uh, in keeping momentum in one of these cars and making them go fast. Can I just clarify? I meant to say less forgiving, not less unforgiving, as this battle continues. If you can call it that, because Schumann, frankly, is dominant. You can see he's now deep in lap traffic, which can always throw up different scenarios. Great tight action shot there as they work their way through the top turns. But Schumann, he's been will perfect from the get-go in this race. And wonderful reflexes in traffic. He's making it look easy. He's in very thick lap traffic here. Yeah, I mean, for, for a race that we saw nearly no lap traffic for the first probably 18 or 20 laps, all of a sudden he's uh, he's surrounded by it and, and uh, he's in the thick of it. But he's doing a great job to, to get through them and, and with this racetrack being quite narrow. I've got to say, it must be a very physical job tonight driving one of these cars on a track that is demanding you'd be spent at the end of 30. It's that, pretty, sorry that you would be uh, I, I tell you the biggest thing is your concentration here the concentration not to bash that ledge and uh, not to spin out on the slick but that's where that's what'll be wearing these guys out even more than the physical stuff David. Fair comment so Schumann he goes up on the inside of Clayton the driver of car number 45 Again, a great shot of the American pro negotiating turns three and four. He now comes up behind Andy Pierce. Pierce, one of the sports top administrators, the president of Speed Cars Australia. He's about to be lapped on the inside, and Sherman goes wham. Gets the pass done easily. Now exits turn number four and embarks on his final lap. Sherman is going to emerge a comfortable victor. 
in heat number two of the prestigious Speed Car Pro Series. A front row start, and he has driven away from his rivals. A great performance by Casey Sherman as the checker unfold, unfolds rather, at the Collie Speedway. That's easy for me to say. Neville Lance second, Alex Bright third, then Brown in fourth, and Lee Redmond again proving very consistent in this tournament with a fifth place finish. And Sherman very keen to get out of the car and celebrate. I'm sure he'd be happy with that after uh, after coming pretty close in the in the first round. Race recap now for Val Berlin, Sin Power. It was an event that featured several incidents. Sherman jumped out and went straight to the front. It wasn't long we saw, before rather, we saw Vaughan Manders get upside down in that incident as he came into contact with the Mears car. It was a nasty crash and they took plenty of time about getting Vaughan Manders out of the machine. And Buckwalder, one of the four Americans, he too got upside down. And when the race resumed, it was a battle between Neville Lance and of course Casey Schumann, Jordan and Robinson got together, no harm done. And Lance, well, he tried really hard, but in the end, he lost touch with the race leader, Casey Schumann, who drove away from his rivals. And once he got into lap traffic, he was able to put plenty of cars between himself and his nearest rival. Schumann, too good for them in round two of the championship. Well, Alex, still not a disappointing night. Third place is a good spot to finish in. Yeah, we had a strong car, car early on, qualifying through the heats and, and for the pole dash. And... Uh, just missed it a little bit, so nothing is to it. And Casey was fast, Neville was fast, uh, even Mark Brown was fast, but uh, ended up third, and we'll go get him tomorrow. Well, a weary Neville Lance wiping his face away there. A great second place there tonight, Neville. Yeah, came up a little bit short, but I mean, um, considering last week's dramas, and yeah, tonight was great. I mean, to all my crew and my sponsors, like Lance Lord Electrics, um, we got Empire Graphics, Helltech, JCB, Beyond 2000 alarms, all those guys that help me get out of here every time I go race, and I appreciate it to all my crew and to all the fans coming down and watching us and battle out here. It was a great night. Well, he's just exited the car, winner of tonight's second round of the Speed Car Pro Series, Casey Schumann. That was a good run. <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, man, these guys, they had the car awesome all night, really. I mean, it, that's the most comfortable I've been in this thing, and uh, we just had it good. I mean, I, I pretty much ran. 30 qualifying laps until I got caught behind lap traffic there, but the car was awesome. It's awesome to win, you know, in, the, in Travis's car. You know, he's, he's a buddy of mine that just asked me to come over and do this, and it's awesome to win for him and their family. Um, it's awesome to win in Australia. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to say you did that. Indeed it is. Well done to Casey Sherman. He now leads the points on 600 in advance of his compatriot, Alex Bright. Mark Brown, still third. Lee Redmond, what a job he is doing Scott Glazebrook is next, then Nifty Neville, Paul Robinson, Daryl Clayton, Dane Kingshot, and Travis Mills. So that's the top 10 in the Speed Car Pro Series at the completion of two rounds. Before we wrap it up today from Collie, a reminder the December issue of Speedway Racing News magazine goes on sale next week, featuring Adam Clark on the front cover. Essential reading, some very big news stories in that issue, and it's on sale for $6.95. For further information, check Facebook or Twitter. And next week here on Check and Flag, we again go racing with sprint cars. It's the second round of the AHG Sprint Car Series, a stellar field. And the action comes to you from the Perth Motorplex. You'll see it Wednesday night at 8.30. Again, all the social media contacts there for further information. Congratulations to the top three tonight. Thank you to Sammy Walsh and Warren Ferguson working with me in commentary on behalf of the entire production crew here at the Quit Collie Speedway in Western Australia. It's a very good night. You've been watching Checkered Flag on Speed, proudly presented by Valvoline Sinpower, delivering the ultimate motor oil protection and performance.